what is going on guys welcome back to another video here on ranger central and today while cap friendly is still up figured you know what let's do this type of video because number one i know you guys are sick and tired of the free asian trade target videos uh i see the comments i know it but uh besides that i'm getting pretty tired of them myself so why not take a break today from the uh from that because i'm trying to upload daily if i can throughout the off season is that gonna last i don't know it's like a four month thing I'm gonna try my best though but i figured you know what let's go ahead and just do a deep dive evaluate raid and assess by the end of this chris drury's tenure thus far with the new york rangers so let's just not waste time let's jump into it uh don't remember if i said to leave a like and just all that stuff and if i haven't do that but anyway uh let's look at the contracts first that he has handed out so uh the biggest contract they hand out at to this day at least which is june 15th and unless there's a big extension in place uh coming up for any of these players which i doubt it because igor's not eligible until july 1st but just pre-record that's my point uh but adam fox at 9.5 million no no move clause there uh he was an rfa signed to seven years very solid contract. You could at most argue that Adam Fox is overpaid by 500k to a million, uh, and even then, I don't think that you could really make that argument. I think Adam Fox got what he deserved. Uh, a guy that won the Norris Trophy. I know people are gonna argue. Well, you know the playoffs. What's happening there? And I know that he's been playing hurt in the past few playoffs. And again, that's a conversation to have. In my opinion, if this happens one more postseason, but in terms of what he provides for you in the regular season. Uh, in terms of what he's been, 9.5, very good contract there. Now we jump into uh, Mika Zabanja, which is uh, a very interesting subject, isn't it? So, um, yeah. I don't know how to say, <laughs> how to grade this one or say anything, because at the time you think, all right, well, they saved some solid money here. Like I thought for sure, you would think for sure, you know, Mika gets like nine and a half, 10 million, eight and a half, not bad. The problem is full no move clause through the entire contract. I don't think it lightens up at least to a modified. The entire contract's a full no move. I'm like 90% sure. Uh, the other problem is this was signed after Mika's advantage had had a pretty letdown had somewhat of a letdown of a 2021 season. So I would say pretty risky too to do that. Um, does he get this price point after that season? I don't know. The other issue I have too with this is the Eichel rumors and they could have had Jack Eichel if they flipped him. But again, that's revisionist history if you want to say that. Uh, I don't agree that's revisionist history. But regardless, um, biggest advantage at 8.5. He's, uh, I'm not going to sit here and pretend it's a terrible contract entirely because I'm not going to sit here and say the Banjad is the worst. Uh, but let's be honest here. Overpay. It's an overpay. Like, let's call a spade a spade here. Igor Shosurkin, talk about a steal of a contract. Four years, 5.6. The issue is, will the Rangers win a cup while he's under this contract? I don't know. They got one more year to do it. And that would have made this contract even more of a steal than it already is. And not going to waste time on this. Probably Drury's best contract. And if it's not that one, it is this one coming up, at least thus far, two years into this contract in Vincent Trocek, because everybody doubted Vincent Trocek to be the second line center of this team. For me, I want Nazem Kadri more that offseason, because I thought Kadri was going to get this price point. And thank God they didn't go after Kadri, because he ended up getting way more. And I was like, all right, Vinny Trocek, I'm on board. Better than Ryan Strom, better than Andrew Kopp. Let's do it. And sure enough, he's been just as advertised, if not better, this past season, especially. Really good season for Vinny Trocek. 5.6, very good deal. Phil Peedle, hard to gauge this deal because of the fact that he was injured pretty much the entire year with a concussion. Like, how are we supposed to judge that first year? We don't know how the last four are going to age. The last four, I'll tell you right now, are either going to age terrific or we're just not going to see Phil Peedle play again because of injuries. It's really going to come down to that there. Or we maybe see him get moved um, if the Rangers could get his value boosted up a bit. and They want to shed some cap because they feel, all right, well, you know, he's a solid player at 4.4. Maybe we could do better there. I don't know. Hard to gauge on what that contract is. DeAndre Miller, bridge deal stuff. Really not bad here. 3.8 um, for two years. 
not much to say there bridge deal is already going to come to an end soon he's playing better than that value so or, or at least up to that value i'd say so solid deal there barkley gudro uh let's just call it how it is probably the worst contract he has handed out to date six years 3.6 you can debate me because a bad ad you could debate barkley gudro i still say barkley gudro i know he had a good postseason but let's call it how it is 3.6 for a fourth line center for six years is just not ideal and the no move clause on top of that uh-uh nope uh ryan lingren three by three not a bad deal. Not really a bad deal at all for what Ryan Lindgren uh, played. I don't view him as a top pair demon. I really don't. But again, he's played up to that value at the end of the day. That, so you could call that a good deal. This you could also argue is Drury's worst deal. Uh, Patrick Nemeth, three years, 2.5. I don't think I need to discuss anymore. You could just vomit and we can move on. Capo Caco, one year deal, 2.4. Of course, signed a couple days ago. We'll see what happens there. Really not much to judge there. Lafreniere on this bridge deal. Um, all I could say is you better lock him up on July 1st or at least before this upcoming season because this 2.3 is a steal right now and he's looking like a franchise guy. Not really going to judge like previous contracts uh, too much. Like, you know, this Heedle one that expired. Good deal there. Kako is what it is there. Ryan Reeves, one year, uh, 1.7. Why? All I can say is why with this contract. It made no sense for the Rangers to trade for Ryan Reeves and then give him a mirror of a contract to what he already had when you had no idea how Ryan Reeves was going to hold up to begin with going into, what, a 36-year-old season, 35-year-old season, whatever it was. You had no idea what Ryan Reeves was going to be. Why on God, uh, God's green earth did he give him $1.7 million? Terrible deal there. Um, again, not going to completely bash on it because at the end of the day it is 1.7 i'd be ridiculous to cry entirely about a 1.7 deal but why are you even entertaining wasting cap on that when the guy got moved either way like 13 games into that next season so there's that uh you go in the sammy blay another one where i'm like why because he's coming off an acl injury how does he end up getting one and a half million how does he get a pay raise from what he was making the year before that i don't understand uh you could have saved some cap here for the bottom six and it would have just been nice but again it is what it is uh what was done is done in terms of that regard um at least those guys are just not on the team anymore that's what we can be thankful for Yaroslav Halak 1.5 million gave you a good year as a backup I know he struggled the first like eight nine games whatever it was ended up turning into being a very good backup for this team uh I should say very good because the next guy was even better uh but you know Solid stuff from Yaroslav Halak. Jonathan Quick. Uh, this is actually the extension that he signed, though, at 1.2. So, not much to say there uh, with Jonathan Quick. I mean, he had a very good backup year this year. Uh, exceeded expectations through the, through the max there on that. Let's see what he does this upcoming season going into another season where he's what, like, was he now, 37, 38? See what he does. Leave it at that. Not going to spend time on ELCs. I just want to get to, like, the UFAs and stuff. Uh, Jared Tenorti, vomit-worthy. I, I get you wanted a defenseman with control for two years, and you needed the answer for Tom Wilson there, but he was terrible. Jared Tenorti was a dumpster fire. Brett Howden, you gave him a deal. He ended up going. It is what it is. Uh, and that's where we can maybe see the similarity with Kapo Kako. Who knows? I do want to scroll down a bit so you guys can see this a little bit better. Um, Lieber Hayek and Vitaly Kravtsov kind of is what it is. I mean, the rest of these deals, it's hard to even like, you know, get mad about. You could get mad at some of the veterans that he signed that have just not panned out, like Wheeler, Harper, and Pitlick, but they're league men deals, so I'm not going to sit here and uh, throw things entirely over those deals. Were they good deals? No. Um, and they could have done better, but that's that. Uh, like, really, the significant deals... Still a lot that needs to be judged there. Drafted. Uh, get to his drafts. Not a lot of history here with the draft for Chris Drury. We'll see what happens in a couple weeks with this year's draft. Uh, Brandon Othman, so far, looking solid uh, in terms of the trajectory of that pick. Will he be a guy that is going to be a first liner? Probably not. And when you look at guys that went after, like Wyatt Johnston, you're wishing that, you know, maybe you had a guy like him. But for what Brent Othman could provide, I still do not hate the pick for the first round and for the 16th overall pick because there's really so far no one else outside of Wyatt Johnson 
at least I could think of off the top of my head where it's like, dang, I really am pissed the Rangers didn't get that guy. A lot of people hated the Othman pick when they made it. Um, I was one that was like, I, I, I don't mind it. Let, let's just see how it goes. And I, it, it's funny too, because people were pissed off about this one. And then I was pissed off about this one. And, you know, right now it is what it is. I'm giving Gabe the chance, which we'll talk about Gabe when we get there. But it's just funny how that was where fans were pissed about this. Love this one. It was vice versa for me. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, I'm giving both these guys a chance. Offman played four games for the Rangers uh, this past year. Or was it three games? Something like that. Looked good in that first game against Chicago. After that, you did notice a little bit of a dip in terms of his play. Only was getting like five minutes. Sent him back down to the pack. I view him mostly as a future third liner, maybe second liner at best for this team. So for the first round, 16th overall, honestly, you take a player like that. Like, I don't hate it. You maybe want better and you maybe want a bona fide top six winger. But if he is a middle six guy, I'm not going to lose sleep over that. Gabe Perot, looking like Jury's best draft pick thus far. As much as I was pissed off about it during uh, the draft, he still has work to do with the skating. And obviously we have to see what's going to happen now that guys like Will Smith are leaving the college program there at, uh, at BC. Have to see what Gabe Perot's going to do without his line mates. Is he the driving force? Is he a passenger? Time will tell. We'll see. Uh, jury's, uh, jury is still out on him. I almost said Drury, <laughs> but uh, I didn't want to make a corny pun like that. Drury's out on a guy like Gabe Perot still for right now. Uh, let's see what he becomes. And, and I think that still, listen, at the end of the day, even though I wasn't a fan of the pick on the day, this was the guy you had to take because he fell to you. So it's simple as that. Uh, so we'll see what Gabe becomes. Could be a steal. But end up being a steal. It's looking like it could be, though. So I, I'll eat crow on that gladly. Uh, Adam Sakura, second round pick there, uh, 63rd overall in 2022. Uh, oh, he got a little more hype than maybe we should have gave him uh, in terms of the pick. He's probably going to be a guy that's a fourth liner. I know that we were saying that when he got drafted, too. But thus far, has been a little underwhelming, uh, even in Hartford. We'll see what happens there. Nobody's denying the fact that he does have good qualities in terms of like leadership and stuff like that but again we'll see Jaden uh Gruby not really sure what he's up to these days I don't even know if he's in the organization anymore not gonna waste time there move on Ryder Korzak kind of been an up and down prospect for this team has been a guy where he's kind of like I hear about him in bunches I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I know everything about these prospects but all I know he's a guy that it feels like at least from what I hear He'll go on streaks where he's lighting it up, or and then there's streaks where he's just there's really not much going on with him. But Ryder Korzak, again, it's hard to judge some of these prospects because they just have not made the NHL. Drew Fortescue, love that pick. Get a teammate of Gabe Perot. I actually think very highly of Drew Fortescue, and I actually think that he's going to be a very good pick here. A little bit of a steal here in the third round for the Rangers. I think he has potential to be uh, on this blue line for a good amount of years or at least rotate in as a seventh defenseman, which for the third round, hey, you take it. If you get NHL games from guys that are picked in the third round, very happy. And then the fourth and later, especially, you are very happy, which leads me to Bryce McConnell-Barker, which I'm very excited about McConnell-Barker. I've heard nothing but good things from guys like Statboy Steven who are dialed into this sort of stuff. So Bryce McConnell-Barker, excited about him. Same with Brody Lamb. Uh, no lob I've heard good things about. I'm not going to waste time with a lot of uh, these guys. Still don't know how to pronounce uh, Yaroslav's last name there. Malar, I think that's how you say his last name. Uh, but I've heard exciting things about him. Victor Mancini is a guy that intrigues me a bit. Uh, Robrek really intrigues me, especially with the size there. And then uh, Maxim Barbashev, how could he not be intrigued because of the name? If he could be even a... Uh, you know, Walmart version of his brother. I will absolutely take that. But I'm not going to judge too much of the draft because we haven't seen enough of these guys. They have combined, what, like four or three games in the NHL, these picks. Now we get to where it gets very fun. The trades, which I want to see all because there is actually a good amount of these uh, from when he has first stepped in office. Um... That was it, right? Here we go. First move was to... I'm actually going to move my face cam up so you guys can see this better. Um, first move, Barkley Goudreau. 
uh, signing rights, acquiring him for a seventh round pick. This is what it is. You trade a seventh round pick. You got Barkley Goodrich signing rights. Sign him to a terrible deal. Um, I'll grade the trades as we go. I'll give that trade a D plus. Uh, and the only reason is the contract. But if you're looking at it as the trade alone, seventh round pick for signing rights really isn't bad. Uh, Brett Howden got out of him. Uh, got a fourth round pick. Nick DeSimone, which you didn't really get much from him. It is what it is. Uh, I'll, I, I know Brett Howden went on to win a cup and ended up being, has been, I should say, a solid debt piece for the Golden Knights, but it just wasn't working here. So I'm willing to give that trade like a B minus because at the end of the day, you do have to dock points because Brett Howden did work out elsewhere. But it's, again, a scenario where it just was not going to work here probably. And now you get to uh, the trade that made Chris Drury the most famous. Pavel Buchnevich, his RFA rights for Sammy Blay in a second round pick. Um, I don't think I should grade this trade. I I'm going to give a very harsh grade. Like, I... You know, I'm done just giving the... I, I can't give these grades individually. I don't know if I could. But... It's... It's... Like, how could it be anything but an F? Because... They didn't even utilize the second round pick. Uh, funny enough, I think it actually got traded back. Uh, no, it wasn't traded back to St. Louis. It was traded somewhere else. So at the deadline at some point. One of these deadlines. Sammy Blay... I know he tore his ACL, and it's unfortunate what happened there, but not a good depth piece. And then you lost a guy that was a first line player. It's just like, how did Drury not fetch more? Like you can't, like you can't sit here and tell me that I'm watching guys like Alex Newhook fetch first round picks in the off season, yet Pavo Buchnevich got a second round pick and a fourth line player. No, get out of here. This trade, I'm sorry, it's an F. And whether you want to argue or not, Pavo Buchnevich was the right fit and was going to be a guy that would perform in the playoffs here. I'm not going to sit here and argue that. But from the optics of this trade alone, there is no reason to argue Chris Jury couldn't have got more for Pavo Buchnevich. I'm sorry, this trade is an F in every single aspect. Draft pick move, not really going to say much. They got Korzak. He's looked good. Not going to grade that trade. Ryan Reeves for a third round pick. I get you wanted to get tough, and I loved what Reeves brought in terms of energy to the locker room and stuff like that. Cap was pretty much nothing that season. They had all the cap space in the world. It kind of was what it was, but I'll give that trade just like a C, C minus. Like, I would have liked for them to have given up less for Ryan Reeves, but it is what it is for the year that you got from him. Again, maybe you could have argued a better fourth liner would be good. Now we get into a trade that looked like, made Chris Trey look like a genius. This is an A-plus uh, slam dunk right here. You get a first-line right winger that helped contribute to your team getting to the conference finals for a fourth-round pick. Frank Vitrano trade gets an A-plus. Uh, and the only reason you could dock points at all, which I won't dock it because we're grading strictly on the trade right now. Uh, I know that's kind of hypocritical because of Goudreau, but um, the only reason you could dock points is that he did not keep Vitrano. Uh, Justin Braun for a third-round pick. C. C plus. Like, this was the price for a guy like Braun. Would have liked it to have been cheaper, but it is what it is. It's a third-round pick. Hard to be mad. Uh, but Justin Braun helped contribute a bit. An NHL move with Merkley and Potato. Not really going to dive into that. The Andrew Kopp trade. A little interesting, this one, isn't it? Because um, at the time... We weren't really uh, thinking much of it. There's where that second round pick was traded to. It was to Winnipeg. So they traded Morgan Barron, who has found himself a home in Winnipeg. I'm not sure how much he played from this year, actually. Uh, didn't really hear much about him this season as much as last year. Uh, but Morgan Barron, a first round pick, a second round pick, and a fifth round pick. And the condition was that it upgraded to a first, uh, the conditional pick, if the Rangers ended up winning two rounds and Cop played 50% of the games those conditions hit and obviously we don't know what the draft picks are going to become which Obrek could be a good pick for the Rangers here is because they did get a six round pick cops a weird player like he was just such a passenger I wasn't I was a fan of the move at the time but for what cop ended up being 
I was hoping for him to be a third line center for this team. He ended up being a top line right winger. Um, top six right winger, I should say. I'll give the trade a C minus D plus. Maybe I'm being harsh with the grading, but you gave up a lot of assets for a guy that was just too much of a passenger and really wasn't good after that Pittsburgh series too for you in the playoffs. So I don't know. Tyler Mott, the GOAT. Tyler Mott. Um, I'll give this trade, if we're being honest, I'll give this trade like a B minus, flat B. Fourth round pick for a fourth liner. You can maybe even say B plus. Somewhere in the B range there with Tyler Mott. Solid fourth line piece for you. It sucks that he got hurt though in that year here, but, uh, or half season here, but you gave up pretty much nothing for a guy that contributed for you a good amount. So, solid trade there. Alexander Georgiev to the Colorado Avalanche is signing rights for a couple draft picks there. I'll call that trade. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. This might be my Georgiev hate buy showing in, but I'll give that trade like a B minus. Um, you stockpile draft capital for a goalie that you weren't keeping in that wanted to be a starter somewhere else. The only thing you could argue is maybe you could have got a second round pick in there instead. But again, that's nitpicking the trade at most. And uh, yeah. Again, B, B minus there with a guy like Georgiev. Uh, then we get to, <laughs> I don't know how to grade this one because I'm glad as all hell they got out of the Patrick Nemeth deal, but you got to grade this like a D plus C minus. Now, this trade could have been so much more revived if Ty Emerson just stayed after watching what he did with San Jose. Oh boy, I wish Ty Emerson stayed. Because you could have graded this trade actually, like you actually could have gave this trade like a C plus, B minus if Emerson stayed. The problem is he didn't. Not a prospect, at least for Nemeth, but at the end, the trade draft picks, all this draft capital, this garbage deal. Yikes. Neil Zonquist, A plus. You got a first round pick for a guy that just was not going to be what you thought he was. A plus. Done right there. Ryan Reeves got a fifth round pick. I'll call it D minus D. Got have a contract that you didn't want. Got a fifth round pick. The only reason it's not higher, you got less than what you traded to get him. So I give it that sort of grade there. Again, maybe I'm being harsh with these deals. Now, um, Vladimir Tarasenko, Nico Mikola. Uh, the splash of a deal there. They gave up Sammy Blay, Hunter Skinner, fourth, and then a first round pick. Obviously, it is hard to look at this trade as a success because of the fact that they lost in the first round. I, however, though, am going to give it a B or a B minus because you addressed a need on defense. You addressed the need in your top six by getting Vladimir Tarasenko. And this was at the time where Patrick Kane was stalling things out. And you thought, well, Patrick Kane's not going to give an answer. Then Vladimir Tarasenko is the guy we're going to go with. And honestly, I'm not losing sleep over anything they gave up outside of the first pick. That's really about it. And we'll see what that first round pick becomes with uh, Theo Lindstein there in St. Louis. But I don't know. I'm not that mad at the deal. Tyler Mott for Julian Goche in a seventh round pick. I'll give it a B minus C plus. The only reason I'm not grading it high is because I just kept the guy in the offseason, but said you wanted to hold on to Ryan Reeves. So there's that. Um, William Lockwood and a seventh for Vitaly Kravtsov. Actually going to give that trade a generous grade. I'll give it a B minus because you got something for Vitaly Kravtsov. Better than nothing at that rate. And William Lockwood actually played, uh, gave some serviceable help there for Hartford. You could maybe dock it down to like a C plus or a C just for the fact that they should have traded Kravtsov earlier. To that, I would say fair. But I don't know. I I'm willing to be generous on that one. Now we get to the Patrick Kane deal. Um, Patrick Kane, of course, this was a three-team trade, so they were able to get double retention. The cap gymnastics the Rangers went through to get this done. They got Patrick Kane and Cooper Zek. They gave up Adam Walensky, a second-round pick, and a fourth-round pick to Chicago, and then they gave up a third-round pick to Arizona to help be a third-party broker. This trade, giving it a B, B-. minus. Again, you got a guy that you needed. You Again, people might argue the too many cooks in the kitchen didn't work out sort of deal. It is what it is. I'm still willing to blame the core guys more than the trade deadline acquisitions. I just don't think, like, I don't know if you could argue for on the surface for what Patrick Kane could have costed. The fact that you got him for, you know, 
middle round draft picks the highest asset you gave up was a second round pick i don't know how you could be too mad about that i'm willing to be uh nice with that deal say that anton bleed for gustav uh riedel i'm actually willing to give that trade a solid a because anton bleed contributing in the organization riedel went overseas i was high on riedel and thought he was going to be something for this team didn't end up being the case and bleed actually locked an nhl game or two for the rangers this year there you go um there you go Shane Grube is not in the organization I was right you get a draft pick back for a guy that you didn't want you needed the stockpile draft picks there you go so I'll uh, I'll give it an A be nice again uh trading up for Drew Forescu not really gonna grade that trade now we get to this year's deadline where Alexander Wenberg for a second and a fourth B minus um I didn't hate the trade package at the time. I was like, this is what you got to give to get a third line center. But Wenberg just was not what they envisioned at all. And it kind of, it, it sucked the trade. Like, let's be honest. It really wasn't that great. Um, I'll say C minus though. Like, I, I wasn't, I didn't love what Wenberg really brought to the table here. Then you get to Chad Ruedel for a fourth round pick and, C minus D plus because this isn't bad and you had to get bodies. I get the argument there, but the problem is what's the point of getting bodies if you don't use them when you have guys injured like Adam Fox was, like uh, Ryan Lingren was, Jacob Truba and all these other guys that were injured and Ruedel barely even played for this team. But again, I'm not going to be too harsh on the trade. I just won't. Nick Patan, um, A plus. You got the greatest player in the NHL, Nick Patan. A plus deal. Turner Elson, smell you later. We got Nick Patan now. Send the guy now. All jokes aside, um, last trade, Jack Rosovic for a fourth round pick. And if the Rangers made the finals, it would have upgraded to a third. So, and if he played in 50%, which he did, which, oof, they made the finals and they would have gave up a third for Jack Rosovic, which you know what the trade off would have been worth it if they won. So, I wouldn't have cared then. But, they didn't. Jack Rosovic, though. Um, this trade stinks. <laughs> like the this trade stinks. Um, D minus. That that's what I'll give this trade. Uh, because you can't be too mad about a fourth round pick, but the player stunk. The player was just, it was just awful. Um, Jack Rosovic was terrible, and it is what it is. Hopefully that was a one and done thing and they're not going to keep him around, which I don't envision it being the case. So if we're going to grade Drury's tenure as a whole, if we're going to come to the final verdict of his grade, um, I feel like it's fair more to grade it on the individual things like contracts and stuff like that versus the overall type deal because it is hard to gauge. If we're going to go contract wise, I'll go with a B minus or a C plus because there's some bad contracts in there, but there's also some big steals. So it puts you somewhere in between. If you go to the drafts, it's hard to gauge. Things are still looking interesting there. And then trade wise, I got to be honest. It's hard to say Chris Jury came out on top in a lot of these deals. And if it was, it's like, Really nothing significant outside of like the Niels Lundqvist deal. Grade wise, I gotta go like C C minus. Maybe I'm being harsh on Drury, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, and this will be my final verdict on Drury in general, is I don't necessarily have a hundred percent faith in the guy to begin with. Um, if I'm being completely transparent. And you're entitled to your own opinion if you want to believe in Drury, that's up to you. Um, but I don't entirely believe in Chris Jury, if I'm being completely frank and honest. But I don't have a choice but to believe in him. But let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Tell me how harsh I was on some of these grades. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys like this content a little bit more, a little bit different here uh, from what we've been doing here mostly in the offseason. But thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. Leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one.